what's good youtube this is martin and today i'm going to be giving you five secrets of how you can paint a nice shadow in photoshop well a lot of most people have been asking me this question just to make an in-depth video of how to paint shadows i've already done that but when i check out this video i find out that yes it really helps but not just the way it's supposed to be so i go back and i break down the steps into five that is really going to help you guys to paint a proper shadow in photoshop but first thing you need to know is that i won't be painting in this video i'll be going over through some certain process and just show you how you can apply those process in your artwork when you are painting and with that i really hope you will be able to make a nice shadow with your art so but anyway let's just get back into the video so the first one i'm going to be showing you that is the first secret i'm going to be telling you telling you guys about it's having many reference now most people when they are painting they always make use of the color reference they have which is very very bad but most times it is very very okay if you count yourself as a professional and you are really good in what you do then you can continue with making use of the color reference but in most scenarios it is not really advisable to make use of the color reference because you have to squint your eye very well for you to figure out the shadows and highlights of the artwork most especially when you have um, a reference photo that we have a lot of light it will be really really difficult for you to find out those highlights and shadows that's why you need to have a lot of reference or as much reference you can create so in my opinion of you guys having much reference i am just going to tell you like maybe two or three references okay probably you have the what the black and white version the high contrast the low contrast and color version now with all these you will be able to figure out your highlight and shadows and how to place them on your artwork so let's really check that and see how it's going to work so yeah let's assume this is the artwork i'm going to be working on this is the reference photo i'm going to be working on so i have these first you need to import for the artwork or the reference into photoshop or whatever program you are using that is if you can edit it into several ways you can have to import it into photoshop and when you import it into photoshop you need to convert the photo into a black and white now you have two ways of doing this i'm going to be doing this in a non-destructive way which i can modify it in several ways well we can still do that any way you want it you want to do it in photoshop but let me just show you some process which you can use in doing that so i have this set to smart object as you can see right here it's a smart object so when i go over to image and i apply any adjustments so let's just see the cause adjustment I click on ok i will be able to edit that adjustment later but i don't need that so i'm going to delete that and if you rasterize the layer when you go up to image adjustment and you apply any adjustment it's affecting the artwork it's affecting your reference directly now when you hit on ok you won't be able to go back and adjust it so at this point when you make any destructive adjustment to your artwork or your reference photo you have to start all over again but i'm not really doing that so if you have the layer converted to rasterize you have to make use of the adjustment layers which you have at the bottom of the layers panel in photoshop but if you want to do it the other way by making use of the smart object it's fine it's really really okay so since i'm not going to be scaling this image down i'm just going to leave the reference photo rasterized because i'm going to be scaling it down so first come down to this adjustment layer and select and create a black and white adjustment layer now you can see when we turn this into a black and white it's almost like the original reference but at this point it helps you to concentrate on just two colors just something like the mid gray and let's just say the black and the white let's forget about the grays and so on because we have the dark gray the mid gray and also the light gray on this reference photo now with this you will be able to modify this in any way you want you can play around with all these sliders to give you what you want now if you want to add more to the red you can take the reds down now you can see that we're what 
popping out the shadows in this artwork give it a whole lot of difference between the, the highlights and the shadows knowing the kind of value we are going to paint in now if you look at this side you can see that the highlights here it's not that bright but we can tell that we have a lot of highlights or highlight stuff that's really really going on here which you can see at this point now you can see how dark the lips can be this side you can see that what the part of the nose this side is more dark than this side now if we turn this off you can see that it's a little bit difficult for us to figure out between this two part which is dark but if you can squint your eyes very well you will be able to figure out that this part it's still dark than this part but not as much as we can see when we convert it into a black and white and take down the reds i'm going to reset this because we just need a black and white reference for now so we have the black and white reference so this is the use of make this is the what important part of making use of adjustment layers because you can stack more and more layers on top so now the next thing i'm going to do i will go down to that part and select uh brightness and contrast now i'm going to what add a lot of contrast to it so let's see what's going on now you can see with the contrast it's what popping out the shadows very well now you can make use of the black and white adjustment layer to add the contrast to your aspect that is if you like now if you really want to make it more simplified for you you can make use of that method now as you keep going but before you do this you want to what save this first as your word first black and white so you have to save it in whatever folder which you want to save you just save it you can name it reference one or whatever name you want to make use of then you can start adding the next adjustment layer but the advantage of making use of this adjustment layer you can add up everything without saving first so when you add up everything then you start turning off the eye of the adjustment layers and start saving your reference each and every way you want them to be so here we have the reference i'm going to double click on this part to open up the properties so we can add more contrast to it and so we're just going to make use of this now you can brighten it up if you like for the highlight that is if you want the highlights very well once you figure out where you have the highlights you can brighten it up but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to hit on zero because we can clearly see the highlights right here so i'm just going to close this now we have the word the brightness and the contrast and also you can make use of the levels adjustment or the curves adjustment that is if you want to so let's play around with one of those so i'm just going to turn this off the brightness and the contrast so click there and go down and select the curves adjustment and from the rgb just set it to the rgb it doesn't really matter don't take anything then just to grab the shadows down a little bit and see what's going on so now we have a lot of contrast on this image so we have you can see now that we, we can figure out where each and all these shadows are coming out from which you can really really see right here now you can still add a little bit to the I'm just going to delete this you know this so we can make one point here and another point there so i can take this down for the shadows and i can take this up for the highlight now you can see a whole lot of difference between the shadows and the highlight now so tell me if you are to paint with this method how wouldn't you be able to figure out where you have the highlights and the shadows it will be very very easy for you to paint the highlights and the shadows at this point so i'm going to save this as another reference so we have this one we have the main black and white we have the one with the high contrast and we have the one with the curves now if you apply all these together you can see what is really really going on in your reference folder but you just have to make use of all this one after the other that is after applying the black and white i did not apply any adjustment to the first black and white adjustment layer because i'm going to be what adjusting them with various adjustment layers so we have all these now lastly if you want to really really check more on the highlights you can add another curves adjustment and work on the highlight but for me i really feel that with this you can really really see the difference between the shadows and the highlight which will give you a nice painting so let me just do something let me increase the size of these just to something like that and i'm going to duplicate duplicate the reference by hitting ctrl j and first make use of the arrow keys to just 
move the move it to this part now don't worry about that so let's do this let's drag it here just for reference purposes i'm going to hold down control click on this and go to the layer mask make sure my foreground color is set to black and i'm going to hit alt and backspace to fill that part go over to this place alt and backspace it's not visible alt and backspace and lastly alt and backspace so now we can really really see what is going on here so hit ctrl d command d to delete that so i'm going to take this down so that we can really see now you can see the difference between the colored reference and the converted reference now you can easily see figure out the shadows and the highlight you can see that the shadows and the highlights we have here it's not really popping out to something we want to paint now but it's really really coming out here to something we can see that is with all the adjustment layers applied so let's try to see between just the black and white and the reference now we can see that it's almost the same thing very very they have the same value but just that we have this in just two colors and we have this in multiple colors so when we apply the brightness and the contrast we can see a lot more of this than we can see a lot more right here and if we turn this off and apply this we can see a lot more of it than this one so having a lot of references is very very important because at any point if you are making use of the colored reference to paint your artwork you get stuck of finding out where the highlights and the shadow is for you to paint you can switch over to your black and white reference and pick up the shadows there which you want to use so the second secret i'm going to be telling you guys it's understanding your light it is very very important so i'm going to move to the next document i created for you guys to show you guys as you can see right here we have two types of light which is the direct light and the diffuse lighting and as you can see you will see that what the direct lighting creates high contrast and why the diffuse lighting create low contrast you can really really see for yourself now we have just two reference photo here which we can pick from now you can see the whole difference between these two reference so we are trying to figure out the highlights where they are coming from if i trying to figure out the highlights where they are coming from now this it will be really difficult for us to figure out where the highlights are coming from because we have lights from various places we can see we have lights coming from the upper part i'm just going to switch to the brush too i'm going to create a new layer so this is that's a little bit fair so you can we can see that we have lights coming from the upper part we have lights um, coming from some let's say coming from somewhere around here hitting that part and extra lights coming from this part hitting the nose and this side of the chain but let's just keep that let me break everything down for you in a way that you are really really going to understand everything so let's first of all talk about the direct light so when we talk about the direct light direct light simply means a light coming from one source like something like maybe an electric light making use of a point light or any electric bulb just hitting that part of the face casting the shadow to the other part of the face now if you look at this one closely very well every light is hitting from this part so with no doubt we know that what the light hitting this image at this point is coming from this particular part so we have to know that what when we are painting shadows all our focus is really going to be on this part and you can really see the difference now when we talk about the high contrast you can really see the difference you can see the edges of the shadows you can really really see the edges of the shadows which will be really really easy for you to paint and when i mean edges let's just let me grab the brush to back again now you can see that would we'll see the edges right here it's very very easy for you to figure out to paint those edges when you are applying your shadows now you can see you can just concentrate on only one part then all this part just put in le less effort to building your shadows now with all this kind of reference photo that has a direct lighting you don't you don't really need the three reference 
images or multiple reference that you have to work with but most times it's still important because there are some places which you have shadows that you really can't see very well because of the light hitting that particular spot so with the multiple reference you will be able to get all those shadows and paint that in but aside of that you can really really figure out the shadows now you can clearly see the difference between the uh, the direct lighting and the diffuse lighting now let me explain why the shadows is just hitting only this part now you can see that what since we say the light is coming from this part there is no any other light at the what the right part of this image that is going to what diffuse all the shadows that you have right here or that is going to fade out those shadows that you have right there that's why we call this direct lightning and just hitting only one spot so in short the direct lightning is the light that hit one spot of the face casting the shadow to the opposite side of the face you just need to have that in your head and understand that very well now coming to the diffuse lightning when we talk about the diffuse lightning if you look here very well now it is you can really really see the shadows and the highlight just like the first reference we work with you see almost everything almost the whole face has light all over very very well now this light is being cast to the face from different angles we have like casting from the from, from the front the side and the other side that's why the shadows are very very soft that is what we call diffuse light and that is light casting from different angles of the faces that makes the shadows to be very very soft now to my uh, my own advice to you guys if you guys are just starting out painting shadows you don't really really need to start working with the diffuse lightning it is very very important because you are going to find it difficult painting those shadows i find that a lot of very very difficult like i start painting out pictures or reference or just photos with the diffuse lightning which really really give me a lot of difficulties painting those shadows and so on and at this point you are going to airbrush your art so very very well because you find out that the shadows are very very soft and when you find out they are very very soft you, you best the best thing that will come to your head is making use of the airbrush because the airbrush is very very soft no making use of the airbrush it's kind of okay most times but not really i know you must have you might have said that yes you make use of airbrush very well in your artwork but not always a brush are not just fully airbrush they are just a little bit of you know just something like that most of you that have downloaded my brush will really know how that really really works so it is advisable to start with artworks or reference photo that has direct lightning when you work when you start with reference photo that has have direct lightning you will be able to know how to paint shadows properly now the technique you use to paint the direct lightning you will be able to apply here but know how to blend it very well to get the soft edges on this part so that leaves us to the third secret i'm going to be showing you guys and the third secret i'm going to be showing you guys it's for you to what build your shadows a lot of people find it difficult like that is where the main problem comes in most people don't really know how to build their shadows it's common everybody is really going to have that issue most people complain about shadows and so on at the beginning of painting like like for me i find it difficult like almost a year and more than a year to start painting in photoshop because i really really don't know how to apply those shadows and how to make it look exactly the way it is i don't want to take this video longer than it's supposed to be so i'm just going to keep it simple if not i would have shown you guys some of my artwork i started out and how nasty the shadows are really really looking but it's still fair most people don't like it and so on so you just really really need to build your shadows i'm going to show you one we are going to make use of there to build your shadows so this is an artwork i created not too long ago most of you might have seen it now this is the word the flat colors of the skin tone so you started out by applying the first base of the shadows and the highlights then you blend when you blend it's still really going to be soft you want to go back again apply the shadows again and keep applying now on the process of applying you are what building those shadows that is making it strong turning them into shape little by little and when you build your shadows you are giving your artwork a 3d a more 3d 
shape now if i take this away leaving only the flat colors leaving only the flat colors you see that it's just like a 2d avatar or so on so when you start applying your shadows little by little and you build them little by little now it doesn't really matter how long it takes you to build your shadows but as long as you would arrive at the same result as your reference it is very very important so you build up the shadows little by little now as you keep building the shadows little by little you are getting the shape of the body turning them into 3d now you can see that now we have the 3d shape of the neck then we'll go over to the face with a little part of it then we start building the shapes of the shadows of the face bringing out the shapes little by little then we we'll go over to this part and then we keep moving now you can see as we keep going we keep adding contrast to it which is really really important in your artwork having an artwork that don't have a contrast won't really make any sense it is very very important as you build your shadows you build contrast too as well you can see as we keep going keep building them now at this point we lost the whole contrast on the face and this neck which you can see right here trying to balance everything because at some point you, you get to the stage of painting you find out that your highlights are very bright than the shadows which which are not really really matching them you get to dab a whole lot of the shadow colors over the artwork turning it into a flat image again then start off again building the shadows little by little again applying them stage by stage stage by stage so you start getting your lights the way you really want them to be now finally your highlight is really really going to balance everything for you with so on now if you find yourself giving out some kind of light skin then you know you have it as your artwork is really going to be so now when you build your shadows take out your time to build your shadows you find out that your artwork is no more looking flat it's turning into that 3d which really really want it to be that's the difference between a 3d and a 2d artwork like a 2d artwork has less colors and less dimension then 3d artwork has a word more has more colors and more dimension to really really make it looks like 3d and you need to understand that when i say building shadows doesn't really mean that you have to build the shadows only on the skin you have to build it around the whole part of the artwork that is very very but i need to build it around the whole part of the artwork like as you can see right here the eyes the eye this part the lower part of the eyes it's a little bit flat but with this it's not that flat the way it is and keep adding everything that it's really going to work. make it look nice to your viewers eyes and finally the final details which really really have now painting shadows and highlight it's very very simple it, it just really depends on your understanding your understanding matters a lot at this point very very well just keep that in mind when you're building shadows your understanding matters a lot if you take out your time to understand shadows then it shouldn't really take you much time to paint shadow except you just decide to have fun with the shadows that is trying something different or trying a new way of painting but at that point you really know the kind of shadows you want to get but you are just playing at that particular moment which if it's not really working out you can just switch back to the real method you really know of how to paint in shadows and the highlight now this leaves us to the fourth secret which i'm really going to be telling you leave the shapes for later it is very very important now most people always have these errors at the beginning of their artwork now a sketch let's look into a sketch the way you sketch digitally is different from the way you sketch traditionally now when you sketch traditionally you can build in the shapes instantly when you sketch um, traditionally now sketching traditionally is really different from the way you sketch digitally now most people find it difficult to sketch in the appropriate shape digitally than sketching in the appropriate shape traditionally like if you have sketched traditionally and sketched digitally then you really really know how it is now digital way you are trying to let's just say you are trying to sketch the eyes you don't you don't just sketch the eyes with the round shape the way it is like i'm going to leave a link 
in the description to one of my video where i showed you guys how to sketch with geome geometry shapes digitally now with that you start off with a little little lines little by little or big lines start off with lines mapping out the shapes of the face the body the mouth and so on start off with those shapes when you start off with those shapes then later you start building on the round shapes and everything you have now this is the issue most people have now when you start painting shadows and highlight the first thing you start up with is the blocking in you're blocking your colors your solid colors your soft and so on you start with the blocking in so when you keep blocking in you blend you block in again you blend you block in again you blend and as you keep going you keep going with darker colors darker values and when i mean darker values make sure that it's not the muddy darker values let me just really show you guys what i mean so this is one of the artwork i did probably somewhere around last year or beginning of this year i really don't know so here we have the complete artwork so if i go into that folder where i have the skin so let me turn off everything okay so now i started i started with the blocking in as you can see right so now we are concentrating only on the face the neck is separate as you can see the neck is right here if we go into the neck it's still the same process so we are just going to face only the face alone so i started with the blocking in then i apply the first shades of the highlights and the shadows then i blend now everything becomes smooth but as you keep seeing first i really don't mind the shapes at the beginning when i apply the first highlights and shadows i don't mind the shapes now you can see I, I never tried to build any shapes right yet i just give in the highlights and the shadows in a way that it's really going to form the head but i never really care about building the shapes that is very very important at this first stage i care about building the what the highlights and the shadows in the way that it's going to form the shape of the face as i keep going then i blend when i blend you can see that i lost all those shapes that you have that I have right here i lost every single shape not really worrying about all those stuff but you can see that few of the shapes are showing up leaving a trace to what i'm going to work on to what make those shapes comes up come out come out very well you can see that now if you look at it here we have no single shapes at all but the fact that i have blend these add a little bit of highlight and shadows the face still look a little bit flat at some points which you really need to have in mind then i go over again apply some what highlights and shadows which i call the final details at this point i really don't paint much applying so much things on this artwork and then i just keep it very very simple so you can see when i put this now you can see that we have what a lot of shapes on the word face going on than what we have before so when you start out painting shadows and shadows and highlight don't think of the shape of the face just have it in mind your first priority of building the highlights and shadows is just for you to what bringing out the shape of the face little by little or you are doing the blocking of the face and of the highlights and the shadows to what build the face little by little it is very very important when you, every part you paint on a portrait or a particular artwork you don't just aim for the shape when you paint hair like if you paint hair you start off with the um big highlights and shadows then you start going with the what little strokes that kind of like big strokes and so on then you go to the small strokes and finally you go into details of painting the what the hair so everything is step by step you don't rush everything so now once you are done with the final application of the shadows and highlights now you want to apply the overall highlights to fully build the shapes now the final highlights are the things that build the shape of the heads very well it is very certain so when i turn this off you can see that we still have some kind of flat places on the face now when i pop up the highlights you can see that what the shapes of the face it's now really really popping out of the and so then i have this one that said the what the final details we are trying to what just add a little bit of details to the eyes and this part of the mud as you can see right here then finally i add this light just to add a little bit of juiciness to the artwork 
which is very very important so you can really see that it's very very simple to paint shadows and highlight you just matter on how you understand painting shadows and the highlight and this leads us to the last secret i'm going to be showing you guys which is contrast contrast is very very important very very important why contrast is very very important contrast is the thing that is going to tell you the difference between your shadows and the highlights now as you keep painting if you are adding contrast to your artwork it add darks to the darks and add lights to the light but let's just work on only the dark let's just take the dark if you are adding contrast to your artwork it's adding more darkness to the shadows and so on but most people make use of the shadows and highlights to add contrast to their work right in terms of photography they don't make use of the um they don't make use of the contrast they make use of the shadows and highlights so that they can easily control each and every one of all those aspects but let's just quickly check on something so i'm going to close this part then above the completed folder i'm going to create a new adjustment layer of the brightness and contrast so we are going to add a lot of contrast and see what is going on now you can see that what it's affecting the shadows very well very very well only the shadows as you can see right there, just doing a little bit of harm to the highlights now you can really see the difference between the shadows and the highlight now the same thing but at this point you don't want to make use of any adjustment layers when building your shadows and highlight in terms of your contrast in terms of artwork now if you are building your contrast in terms of artwork you make use of your colors to build those the contrast which is very very important so you can start out light yes it's very very important you can start out light like coming over to this artwork in some places in some places so let's just go back and start all over again from this part of the artwork so we start up light with this then we start applying little by little now we have less of contrast here and the next one we apply we make use of a darker value going up again a little bit of a darker value and coming down to this part we apply on the face then we blend after we blend we apply darker value then we still blend there and here is the word the blend first blend and we do the second blending right here and we apply the darker value building up the word the contrast as you can see right here then add up the word value again that decrease the contrast the overall contrast of the face right here then we keep adding now we build the contrast between the word the shadows the neck and the word the face now you can see the difference there everything is really flat at this point like there is no difference between the neck and the face right it's really really flat but when i turn on this layer you can really see the difference right now what makes you to see this difference between the neck and the face it's the contrast that matters a lot so for you to really build a shadow that is really going to be different from other shadows you need to work on your contrast the darker the value the higher the contrast the lighter the value the lower the contrast that is very very important so this my friend are just five secrets i'm really going to tell you of how you can use to paint your highlights and shadows in photoshop these are the tricks i have been making use of severally every time i paint shadows and highlights in photoshop i always make use of this trick so let's take a recap of everything we've done so the first when you started painting shadows or before you start painting shadows and highlights in photoshop you want to have many reference which you can pick from that is if you get to if you stuck at any part of your painting have many reference that is number one and number two light understand the kind of light you have on your reference photo if it's the diffuse light or the direct light and have that in mind that the direct light has a lot of contrast and why the diffuse light has less contrast it's very very important to keep all this in mind then the number three which we are going to be checking is just the what build shadows 
build your shadows when you start up painting don't just paint directly and one thing i'm really going to tell you guys if you start applying your shadows don't make use of the airbrush make use of the hard brushes to apply your shadows and highlights it is very very important make use of the hard brushes and the number four is what leave the shapes for later when you are painting in shadows and highlights don't build your shapes at the beginning that is very very important because if you target your shapes at the beginning you won't be able to achieve the shadows and the highlight that is really going to build out build out that shape very well very very well have that in mind then the fifth one which is the word the contrast which is the most important part of the artwork that's really going to give you the difference between your shadows and the highlights but let me chip in one thing very well so let's say you paint and you get to the ending of everything then you find out that your shadows and highlights are not really dark enough to fit your main reference you are working on well you don't really need to go back and start applying so many shadows and highlights again you can tweak it since it is digital painting you can make use of the curves adjustment levels adjustment or you can even go into the camera roll filter and use that as a common mean, not only photographers make use of the camera roll filter when they try to edit photo the camera roll filter is in photoshop for anybody to make use of as long as you know how to make use of it and when to make use of it like i make use of the camera roll filter most times in most of my artwork and i have already made a video on how you can enhance your artwork which i also include the camera roll feel that so this brings us to the end of this video and i hope this really helps you guys to paint a better shadow into your artwork and if you do don't forget to hit the subscribe button not just the subscribe button ring the bell icon so that you my friend don't miss any new tips and tricks i'm going to be posting every week so see you guys in my next video but before then make sure you paint better shadows